What's up guys, Joel Valley from Media Glitch here and thank you so much for joining us this lovely evening. Thank you for letting us in your home if you're watching this on television, if you're watching this on YouTube. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And now that we got all that out of the way, John, how are you? I, I could not be better. No? It's literally physically impossible. Have you ever played The Last of Us? I have. Have you ever played Uncharted? I hope absolutely I have. Yeah? Yes. Well, man, I tell you what, Troy Baker, mm. He does fellow. the voice of Joel, does yes. the voice uh, in Uncharted. Nathan's brother, I believe, Nathan Drake's brother. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, this guy, okay, so I'm scheduled to moderate his panel. Yeah. And I remember going to the Media Glitch team and I'm like, I've already done panels all day long. I've been moderating all day long and I'm so burnt out, I'm so tired. And he's my last one. And I'm like, I can't even think, I don't even, I have a bunch of questions, but my brain is mush, guys. Like, you don't understand what it's like to sit in one r huge room, you know, full of hundreds of people, and, and you're constantly asking questions for like, I'm on hour 12 or something, you know, and I'm just like, oh my gosh. And so I gotta, I go and I go to meet, uh, uh, meet him for the first time, and I said, hey man, I'm Joel, I, I, I'll be your moderator. He's like, oh man, that's cool but I got something planned. I was like, thank you, <laughs> thank you. It was awesome, he go, but he goes like this, he goes, but check this out, and he pulls out his cell phone, and on it are two girls who are about to get, you know that, that, that that's, keep it clean, son. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know that ride that goes, that the, the slingshot, and they shoot the people up in the air? Yes. So they're on there, and he's like, hey, who do you think is gonna pass out? <laughs> You know oh, what I mean? Okay. And I was, we're, I'm just like, I think the left. He's like, no, no, the right. And then we're just sitting there, and the Taking one bets. on the left starts to like drizzle out. He's like, no! And then, and then she comes to, and then the girl on the right uh, passes out. He's That's like, it. yes! And he's just like, yeah! He's all excited, and then he just jumps up and he starts his panel. Like, wow. the, the, and, and, and I'll tell you what, this panel was amazing, <laughs> man. This guy was so inspiring, the words that he said, and you guys, I'm telling you, you have to watch this panel. It's so good, man. Like, fan for life right here. Yeah. After, you know, have you ever done that? Like, you you meet someone, and you're like, wow, that's a genuinely good person. You I even commit. went up to him afterwards. I said, man, thank you so much. That yeah. was inspiring. It was great to sit down and rest, but it was great to sit down and, like, just kind of receive an inspirational message that he gave. So, sure. without further ado, I'm going to play that inspirational message for you. And I'm a poet and didn't even know it. There it is. I, I will be the guy that like gets a water bottle and like sets it down right here. And then I'll look over here and then I'll go, I don't know what's happened to that since I last looked at it. <laughs> I'm like that girl in signs where it just has like water glasses like all over. That's the only thing we remember from that movie, right? That. Are we allowed to like Mel Gibson still? I don't know what, I don't know. What... <laughs> Like, Joaquin Phoenix is actually doing better than Mel Gibson is now. And uh, Mel Gibson has the Oscar. Zzz. Oscars plural, right? Director and actor? Someone's feverishly looking up IMDb right now. <laughs> By the way, the panel has started. <laughs> like, this is, this is how I do. Yeah, there's, there's like, like, this poor guy is like, do you want to moderate? I'm like, man, it's like trying to be, like, you're, you be hanging onto the bull, and it's just like eight <laughs> seconds. Is, if you get more than that, then you're doing better. And, in the big old rodeo, ho Is that rodeo in Arizona? Yeah. yeah. I thought so. See what I'm talking about? Hang with me, guys. It's going to be a fun hour. <laughs> Arizona. I, I, here's what I commend about you guys. You guys are such steadfast, stalwart pioneers. Because, you ever had a friend tell you, hey man, uh, you want a piece of gum? And you're like, no. And they're like, you sure you don't want that piece of gum? Like, take the hint. That's what the sun is doing to you people. Do you want to get the hell out of the state? Nah, we're good. It's 120 degrees. And this is, this is the thing that I hate, too. Someone goes, well, it's a dry heat. <laughs> so is an oven! <laughs> and you will bake alive in that! I walked two blocks. There's a really cool pub just up here called the Rosen Crown. And great. Here's what I don't understand. I look around, and this is how I know that I've been living in California too long. We walk outside of the hotel, and they have, like, the misters that are on that are just throwing water away. <laughs> no one's standing up there going, 
I mean, I was, I was close. Thank you for these. This is actually saving me. Uh, I was feeling a little... It's just water on. Like, I feel like every... My, I hear my father going, Turn the water off! I'm not paying to cool the neighborhood! And there's just water spouting up. In California, that's like sacrilege. Like, you can't do that because water is so precious. And I, I think about this... You, where, is, where is water in Arizona? No! That's what I'm saying, there's like, there's no like, Lake Arizona. There's no water around! I want to know the first pioneers that got into Arizona and went... I think we're good. Just, just real quick, Phil, I know that everyone's talking about California and the oceans and the mountains and everything, but what do we have here? Uh, we have an indigenous people that want to kill us. We have snakes, mountain lions, uh, no water, and uh, the blazing hot sun that's apparently pissed at us for no reason. <laughs> Guys, we're home. <laughs> like, I don't know how people don't just go, no matter what, keep going in either direction. Either go back home where you started or keep going west. I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, <laughs> this is me, man. This is just tangents. This is the crazy shit that I have in my head that keeps me awake at night. And that's why I love doing panels, because I get to share it with all of you. <laughs> so that at 3 o'clock in the morning, you can be like... Oh my god, that makes so much sense. <laughs> it's crazy, but I do... I, you guys have rain, which is great. I've heard about this before. <laughs> It did that once two years ago in California. And we were all like, the sky is crying! It woke me up and I was, I was genuinely afraid. I was like, what is happening? Oh, that's right. There's nature everywhere else but where I live. See, we don't do, we don't do water, we do fire. Like, that's our element. And we just set the whole state on fire. How, how our entire state has not managed to just burn up like a cinder, I don't know. And trust me, I have nothing, I, I have, uh, I was going to set, actually. Hey, we'll actually be a somewhat on topic. I was driving to shoot a game, doesn't matter which one, I'm not gonna tell you. And I was driving down, I live in the valley, and I was driving down the 405, uh, towards the, the stages, the Sony stages where I'm at. Doesn't give you any hints, doesn't matter. And, and I look, and I mean, I remember waking up at like five o'clock in the morning and I was like, my wife is asleep and I go, get 8-Bit and Grace, our dog and our cat was like, the house is on fire because I smelled smoke. And then I went outside and it was like I was in like, like 19th century London, it was like, Morning, Governor. We've got some murderers about because it was just fog, like everywhere you could see. <laughs> Except it wasn't fog; it was smoke. And everything was on fire, and I was like, "What is going on?" And I drive over the hill, and I have video of this. If you ever saw it, that was on, um, uh, like the, the Westwood fires or Brentwood fires. I was driving into Mordor. It was insane, and it was the left side of of the 405. And this is the most terrifying thing that can ever happen to you. You're looking, and before you is fire, and then you check your rearview mirror, and there's no one behind you. Because they had shut the freeway off, and apparently they looked at me and went, I let them go. <laughs> and there was no five lane highway, nobody behind me, fire in front of me. Do I stop? No! Because apparently, my ancestors didn't stop in Phoenix and they just continued to drive. You guys would have been like, dude, are you, is there any homes up for sale? This feels cozy to me. So I, I kept driving, but the, the thing that, that, that terrified, I have no idea why I brought this story up anymore. This is what's great. All I remember is that all it needed to do is, is just like one little, needed to float over the 405 and then now, it's in my backyard. And I remember talking to friends of mine that lived in the 405 and I'm like trying to get a hold of them. Are you, are you okay? Because we see on the news and we see the impact that it has. And I even, on my way here, the pilot comes over and goes, uh, passengers, we'll okay, just want to let you know the uh, smoke that you're uh, smelling is not coming from the plane. Uh, it's, uh, we're flying over the uh, fires right now. I'm at 30,000 feet and I can smell these things. <laughs> I don't know if the, pa if the pilot was up there going, Dave, do you think we should probably let these guys know that the plane's not on fire? He's like, or have they done that route so many times they're like, 
They're probably freaking out. Make the announcement about the flame. But literally, I could smell the smoke. But I mean, I, I think about this, just one little cinder. All it has to do is just go boop. And now my life is like everything that I care about in the world is in danger. And I'm freaking out. And that's life. That's life because that raging fire that displaced people's homes and, and all of this, some idiot in like an 86 Corolla went, and that was it. State on fire, national disaster because some idiot was like, I'm done with this camel, boom. That's life. It's never like, who has Knight Rider as their ringtone right now? Wait, is it Mass Effect or is it tie-dye? It's tie-dye? The one that's not a to go in, please don't look at me. Hello, Michael. Oh, it's amazing. Good for you. I remember when that, that was Saturday nights. Saturday nights on NBC. I wanted a Camaro so badly. I'm trying to stay on track because I actually felt like I was making a point. That's life! That is life! It's never the big decisions. It's never the monumental things. It's the turn left or turn right. It's that stuff. And your life is forever altered. How about this one? On a chilly November morning, I drive onto the Culver stages for an audition. Just what an actor does. Did I have any water? Not that one, because that's poison, clearly. <laughs> Whoever, well, thank you, dude. Um, yeah. I'm absolutely not drinking whatever he comes back with, by the way. <laughs> Drink this. No. I drive onto the lot, Culver Stages. It's a chilly November morning, and I, I park my car next to this gray production office that, that is next to stage number one. Now, this is the stage where they, like, shot uh, Wizard of Oz. Um, they've done, thank you, dude. Um, what do you think? 50-50 chance, right? <laughs> you drink it first. Um, be my cup bearer. They, um, this is like a really cool moment for me. And whatever you drive, on, um, whatever you drive onto a, a, a studio lot, there's always, if you have any sense of yourself, you go, holy crap. I can't believe I'm here. The first time you drive out of the Warner Brothers lot and you drive up to the water tower, there's a part of you that goes, ah, and you freak out a little bit. Didn't mean you get anything off of that. You just get that experience. So this was me. I'm driving into Tuesday, who cares? And I, I park my car and I get out and I'm feeling good. I'm like, oh, this is cool, man. This is a stage where they shot Wizard of Oz. And I walk into the production office and I freeze. And I look at my character description, and I look at everybody in the room, and it's literally as if the character on the page just like stepped out and duplicated himself in every seat just wearing a different shirt. <laughs> and, and the character was like rough and grizzled. And I come strolling in there with like my faded jeans and my hair like looking like a backup dancer for a K-pop band. <laughs> No, 2010, not acceptable. This isn't good. And I'm like, oh my God. And I realize that I'm staring. And I turn and I try to distract myself and I sign in. Ah, now there's evidence. <laughs> because this wave washes over me. I could leave right now and no one would ever know. And so I like lean up against the door that's what they never teach you in acting class. Always know your exits. <laughs> and I, like, I feel the knob. And so I like kind of turn and I do this. Troy? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Keep good, they're ready for you. <laughs> okay. And I shat myself. <laughs> and I started to go, no hablo inglés. Or suddenly I was like, ah, oh, I signed in. So I walk into the sound stage and there on the far side against this like, you know, conference table are the governors of my fate. Hey, how are you? Oh, well, thank you. That freaking weird commerce that I hate. And I see this girl that's like pacing back and forth on one side of the stage. And uh, 
I go over to her and I'm like, hi, how are you? And she looks at me like a, like a fawn <laughs> trapped in a forest surrounded by hunters. <laughs> Friend! Yes. And I said, uh, um, hey, uh, my name is Troy. She goes, <laughs> Ashley. And I said, uh, you, lo you look like you could use a hug. Can I give you a hug? And she gives you one of those laughs that you, your, 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 your soul like plays like roulette real quick. It's like, I'm either gonna laugh or cry. I'm not sure what's gonna come out. And you just go, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, so I give her a hug and I start the scene. I came this close to walking out on the audition for The Last of Us. Wow. Yeah, no shit. Wow. <laughs> this close to my life being fundamentally and unilaterally changed. This close because of one thing. Fear. That's it. David Milch, creator of NYPD Blue and Deadwood, says that an actor will operate out of one of two places, either fear or faith. And his job as a creator is to create an environment that allows that actor to circumnavigate the fear and operate in a place of faith. And that profoundly moved me. What a tenant to apply to one's life, regardless of what your profession is. If you can just operate in a place of fear, or in a place of faith, rather than in a place of fear, what could you do? And for me, the way that I started instituting that in my life was through three words. And if I can leave you with easy. <laughs> if I can leave you with anything this weekend, or if you walk away from this weekend remembering anything besides do not have the nachos. Woof. <laughs> Three words. Three words. You are enough. You are enough. And more than anything else, I believe that those three words are the most needed words to hear and the most needed words we need to say. More than anything else. I love you is absolutely, but if there's no relationship, those words don't mean anything, but you are enough. If you were to look at yourself, if I would, flash forward a little bit. I got a little bit of time. I'm on the set of Uncharted now. And I come in and I do my thing. I've done The Last of Us. I've done Bioshock. <laughs> I'm good. And I sit down and I'm on my phone looking at Insta, Twitter, whatever bullshit. It doesn't matter at all. And I'm, their first shot up is, is Nolan and Richard and, and Emily are doing a scene. And so I'm just kind of hanging out. I'm having one of my coffee. And I hear Neil go, action. It's so demure. And all of a sudden, Nolan goes, Sully, we got to get out of here. And I mean, I went, Phoop, and I, everything else goes away. It rack focuses to them. And Nolan and Richard and Emily are gone. And I am looking at Nate, Sully, and Elena. And my stomach goes, oh. I'm like, oh my God, dude, you're on the set of Uncharted. You're on the set of Uncharted and you are a fraud. And everyone's about to find out, dude. And that same feeling that made me reach for the door, The Last of Us creeps up again. I'm like, I don't deserve to be, you guys have made a terrible mistake. I really shouldn't be here. And so, I was the next scene up, and we come in, and it's a scene where uh, Rafe is beat. It doesn't matter. It's all, I don't want to spoil it for the one person who hasn't played the game. Um, you. There it is, right there. Oh, her? We forgive you. Um, I, I like, I, I mean, I'm going crazy over this scene. I'm like, oh, 
Nathan. Uh, uh, Prodeus, quote the century, bro. <laughs> and Neil walks up. And the way that Neil gives you notes is he has a little notebook. And he comes up and he's got his little Chuck Taylors. And either his Ellie shirt or his giraffe shirt. And he comes up and he goes, um... What are you thinking? Like about the scene? No, like, what are you thinking? Um, and he looks at me, and he, he always, you can't see me, but he like rocks on the outside of his feet. Um, and he goes, do less. <laughs> do less. Ah, do less. Why am I trying to do more? Why am I trying to convince you that I can act? You are enough. Ju there was a situation in Manchester, UK. There were these people that were gonna put me on tour. And they were gonna pay for the whole thing and starting off with a show in Manchester, UK. And I'd put out this album a little while ago and I had all my friends that were gonna come play with me. And literally right before, the whole thing just poof, goes up into a smoke and I don't get to go. All right, I, they don't get to go, I, I'm still gonna go. And I was met with the decision, do I play a show? And I, 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 I was scared because I, I felt like I needed, I needed the band behind me. And what's it gonna be like to be in a big theater and me up there with an acoustic? I'm not enough to do. Okay, all right, you are enough. And I went out there, great show, great night, just awesome. It was real, I had fun, people there had fun. We rob ourselves of these incredible experiences and opportunities because we bought into a lie that either our friends or this stupid thing has told us that we're not enough. And we believe it, we believe when some guy writes with his thumbs while taking his shit, <laughs> that becomes our governing reality. Um, stupid tweet. <laughs> Flush. <laughs> Heart broken. No. Enough. Enough. I'm done with being offended. There's nothing that you can do that can offend me because I am too focused on making sure that I don't offend you. That's it. My entire life is making sure that whatever f stupid things fly out of my face are not designed to hurt or denigrate or um, in any way make you feel bad. How about that? That's all I'm trying to do. And if I am too busy and too focused on that, I do not have time to think about the thing that you, I think you said to me, not sure, that may have possibly been interpreted as something that's offensive, because I can't. With your thumbs while taking your shit. <laughs> I'm done being offended. You are enough. You are enough. And if there's one person in this room that needed to hear that, good. The whole reason why I got on that flight is worth it. You are enough. Do not let anybody tell you different. Because the second that we actually start believing that, if we dare to actually believe that, the world gets a lot less scary. A lot less scary. It doesn't matter who's in office. I'm not saying either way. I'm saying it doesn't really matter because it doesn't change me. I am enough and I am capable Woof, capable, powerful. I watched my wife deliver our son 40 hours of labor without any drugs. I would have been high the entire time. <laughs> With no regard to my son coming out, just like, it doesn't look right. <laughs> I was like, I had pain. 40 hours of labor at home, no drugs. There is no greater, men, I'm sorry, truth, no greater power on the planet than a woman in labor. Come on. If you brought a life into this world, you deserve a cape. 
<laughs> My God. You are enough. Who's got a question? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I'm a local action here in the Valley, and we're putting on a show in two weeks. And I, I won't be theater. here. <laughs> <laughs> we're a little nervous, but I love theater and everything, but if I want to broaden my horizon and go into voice acting, what are your, what's your advice for getting into that field? Number one question I get asked. Number two is, when's the last plus two coming out? <laughs> oh, no, they don't tell me this. Man, broaden from theater. There's a medium that has been explored for literally thousands of years. 3,000 years of theater. Um, and it's still expanding and in some ways collapsing in on itself, um, depending on where you go. I think there's some really cool, there's, there's more interesting stuff happening in like repertory theater than there is on Broadway right now to me. Um, Broadway is spectacle and it's great and it's awesome. But I mean, I'm talking about like really unpacking character, Tennessee Williams, like um, Arthur Miller. And it, like I, I watched uh, Sam Shepard, um, one of his plays and like that, that's like three actors on stage the entire time. It's brilliant. Fool for love, it's awesome. Um, brother, I do not know what to tell you. Um, I would love to sit here and wax wisdom and, and, and offer some proverb that pierces your heart and the only thing I have to give you is hope, inspiration, and encouragement. Um, I think that you are on an amazing path. You got a good build and a good look about you. I mean, if I can get, give you encouragement. Um, ladies or guys, I think single, maybe. I don't know. Um, very, married or, I think it's very, very. <laughs> Very single. A little quiver in his chin when he says that. Good for you. You are enough, bitch. Um, you don't need anybody else. Um, I, I think that theater right now is an amazing place for you to explore because you get to stay in that character night after night and keep it fresh and keep it real. And you... I, I got to do some theater. Um, my, my theater experience is very, very limited. Uh, we did something for The Last of Us where we did One Night Live. And there is a specific moment um, in that I, I thought was going to land big, and it did not. And you trip over the audience because you're trying to script for the audience, and the audience is different, the audience is a variable, they're, they're a total X factor. And the only Ys that you have are the people up on stage with you. Um, and so that taught me a lot. So I think that theater can teach you a lot, but as far as, don't worry about the voice acting. Voice acting is almost becoming an antiquated thing. There's, there's obviously opportunities to do that within games, but especially like where gaming is going and where even some animation is going, people are wanting to do, they want more theater people because it's being done on a volume, on a sound stage, in a volume, in a mocap suit with cameras right here, and they want people that know how to do this more than just do this. Because a cool voice is one thing, but if I can't direct that voice, if I can't get you to change it, I sound like this. Okay, so um, he's, a, he's a father, got it. But he's a loving father. Ah, I love you. Well, <laughs> like, like softer, mm, I love you. It's the same thing. Um, being able to, and there's some people that are, are um, Charlie Day has got a great voice and I think he's a great actor, but you get Charlie Day to do that really high, whatever, frenetic voice. He's great at that. H. John Benjamin, same thing. He's Archer, he's Bob, he's the, the guy and family guy, but that's just all he does, but he does it so well, so we don't, we don't mind. Um, I think that what theater can teach you and what other opportunities can teach you is that it's just a tool, it's just an asset. I go to work and I open up my toolbox, I'm like, what am I doing today? It's like, we need this, like, got it. And this is, this is what I do. And I, I try to get as skilled as I can with these, with these tools that I have at my disposal. But the acting, my friend, is what will teach you how to build that character from the ground up. That theater will teach you how to take that direction to interpret a script, how to work with other actors, and how to take that idea that you have worked so hard on and completely throw it away and be open to something completely different. Perfect example of, of acting in what you think in a video game is supposed to be. Uh, the ranch house scene in The Last of Us, going back to Ashley Johnson. It's a scene where Ellie's run away and Joel finds her and she's up in the bedroom going, is this what girl's really worried about? Remember that, you know what I'm talking about? Okay. In the script, 
the line is, or we'd done this scene several times and it was good and we were happy with it. We could have put that scene to bed and moved on. And we just, we just didn't. We, we were like, that's good. No, it's, it, it, just, it feels like there was a whole other layer to this thing that we hadn't tapped into yet. And I asked Neil, like, can I take five? He goes, take 10. And I went over to the corner and I just kind of sat. And I think Ashley did the same thing. And we came back and didn't say anything. We just went straight into the scene. No notes from Neil, nothing. No rocking on the outside of his feet. And there's a line that Ellie says where everyone that I've ever cared about, everyone has left me except for you. That's not what's in the game. What's in the game is everyone that I've ever cared about, everyone has left me fucking except for you. And she shoves me. There's no shove in the script. Ashley made a choice based out of how she was feeling and she used this kinetic energy that her own frustration was, was creating and she channeled that into her character, into the scene. And that's what you remember. That's the one that we went with. And it took my performance, which was stoic and like not even paying attention and being perturbed to, don't you ever touch me again. That's what it was now for me. I'm like, you're right, you're not my daughter. And that's how we get that beautiful scene. It's not scripted. It has nothing to do with the voice. It has everything to do with two actors in a scene together, listening to each other, and a director that is willing and able to give them a place to operate inside of that faith. Best luck to the show. We're good? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Who? Yes, sir. Who started it? Did you start this rumor? <laughs> Is your name Reddit? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Will I? No. Um, this is what's great. Is we put up that trailer. I love it. It's like Schrodinger's cat right now. And I just yeah. get to watch all of you go. <laughs> because I know the truth. Um, and it's both right now. And I, have, I cannot think of another situation in a game where that has been the case, where people have extrapolated and they've, they've dissected this scene. And not, not only that, but, the, but also the subsequent trailers are going, well, there's the proof. We haven't seen Joel. So that, and I, I was, I, we've had conversations about it. I was like, what do I, he goes, don't say anything. And it was really hard for me because I lied to your face for two years. No, there's not a part two. We'll see, fingers crossed. <laughs> It was so hard. As a fan, it was hard, because all I want to do, it's the reason why I'm here. When you bring up your copy of The Last of Us, all I want to do is nerd out. It's always like, did you remember? There was somebody, I don't know if you're here or not. There was someone that was talking, where is it? With her, or she's freaking out too, yeah. You can say her, you're just like doing the thumb thing. That, okay, finger's better, whatever. Avoid the finger gestures. Um, she can speak for herself. Um, Someone was talking about, she was a background artist, Megan. Damn it, you was so cool. Um, there's a whole scene in The Last of Us where I played through on my second or third playthrough, I discovered a scene, it's not even a scene, it's just a part of the art, the environmental background art, where if you shine your light down on the floor, they didn't suffer, you know what I'm talking about? If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you want to play through the game again, when you get in the sewer, <laughs> nerd, when you're going through the sewers, you're separated from Ellie and Sam, it's just Joel and Henry, uh, there's a room and there's, you, you go in and you look and it's like it's a school room and I went in before and I was like, okay, there's nothing here that I need and I left. And the second time I was like, all right, what, what's in here? Let's, let's take a look around. I'm shining my flashlight around and you know, shaking the controller. And I looked and I was like, okay, there's like a chalkboard there and there's a dead guy there and there's like a tarp. And I looked closer, I was like, is that a foot? And that's a little hand, oh my God. And I realized the tarp is covering children's bodies. And I look over to this guy and the skeleton in his hand is a piece of chalk. And I shine the flashlight down on the ground and it says, they didn't suffer. <gasps> Oh, 
Not a scene that was shot, no actor in sight, not a line of dialogue. It is the world telling you a story. I want to nerd out with you. I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> you. Um, what kind of headspace did you have to be in to play Batman and Joker? Which, I mean, two different headspaces. Well, yeah, so one. Batman. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. If I said Joker, what would have happened? <laughs> Batman first. Um, Lego Batman is literally a buffet. I can come up and I'm like, oh, there's a little, ooh, Adam West is good. Yeah, we're going to put Adam West in there. And um, we're going to, we're just going to keep the Christian Bale up to the side. Yeah, I'm going to get just a little bit of here. There's Michael Keaton and a whole lot of Kevin Conroy. Right, just a lot of Kevin Conroy. Um, Kevin Conroy is like kale. I'm like, it's good for you. I don't know why. But, um, <laughs> uh, Joker. Walked into that audition. Audition. Hear me when I say this. Audition. There are times when people will go, Uncharted 4. Neil goes, I want you to play Sam. Bam. Every once in a while that happens. But make no mistake, man. I'm still trying to prove myself to people. Um, and, and they still are, are afraid. And, and when you're talking about a multi, multi-million dollar franchise, and you're going to be the lead character or a pivotal character, I know you can act. I know, I know what you've done, but can you just, you can just make me feel better. Sometimes, on that side of the table too, here's some great advice for you, brother. They are terrified. For you, it's an audition. It's your Tuesday. You're gonna go to this audition, and you may go on to another, and then you're gonna go do your life. They have to cast that role, and they may have to cast that role today and you may be the last person that they see. So it's either back to the drawing board or you're the one. And what they want is for you to be the one. Please solve my problem. When you go into an audition, actors, let me see you, where are your hands up? And I'm not talking about, I think I maybe want to be an aspiring actor. You got balls of steel, hat man, yes. Who wants to be an actor? Hands up, bam, okay. You're all actors. Congratulations. Now just go find a way to get paid for it. Jesus. <laughs> when you walk in, and, and I hate the word audition. It's not an audition. It's a meeting, okay? You go in, in no other industry do we go, well, uh, Bill, I've got that uh, audition with a guy in accounting in a little bit. It's a meeting. You have a meeting because they presented you with a problem and you are presenting them with a solution. The solution is you. You are enough, okay? And what we can do is, is instead go in and go, I want to prove to you that I can act and that I'm a lot of fun to work with. <laughs> and that doesn't help at all. They're like, great, you, you, it's a funny joke. I'm speaking from experience, by the way. This is what I did all the time. I came in, as a friend of mine once put it, like a whirling dervish. <laughs> as opposed to I'm here to show you what the character looks like. You may disagree with me. Glenn Morshower, do you know who that is? Of course you don't. He's one of those guys. He played General Morshower in Transformers because Michael Bay thought that'd be funny to call him his name. And he blew him up in the first one. Brings him back for the second one. Calls him on the phone. He goes, Glenn, I got a role for you. He's like, sure, what is it? He's like, same one you did in the first one. He goes, that sounds great, love it. Question, does it bother you that I clearly died in the first one? He goes, continuities for pussies. I'll see you Monday. <laughs> <laughs> That's genius. So, Glenn Morshower says this. What he used to play racquetball every Friday night with his best friends. On the Friday before he got married, he couldn't play because his in-laws were coming in for the wedding. So he told his friends, sorry guys, I can't play racquetball. I have to meet my in-laws. Not, I'm going to audition my in-laws because I'm trying out for the role of the son-in-law. <laughs> I'm marrying 
that woman. I'm going to show them what their son-in-law looks like with that much confidence. That's the confidence you walk into that meeting with. You could be totally off base, but what you'll see is instead of like, I'm going to kind of wear something that the character wore. What if they change the character description? What if, as a matter of fact, the director hates what the guy's wearing in the, in the character concept art? And he can't wait to change it, but they didn't have time, not enough time to do it before your audition. And you come in wearing the exact same shirt from J. Crew, you will never, ever, ever, ever match what is in their head. So the best thing that you can do is change their idea of what the character can be. I've walked in, backup dancer, camp out band, Joel. I'm, guys, if you can find my audition online, and you will look at it and go, what? I'm wearing like true religion jeans. It's bad. And it, it may or may not be an affliction shirt. Ah, mea culpa. I've grown, now I'm wearing this, what is this? I'm like hipster Ace Ventura right now, what is this? Bumblebee Duna. Bumblebee Your balls are showing. Um, but I walked in and I knew something about that character that nobody else did. And it was my little secret. And I didn't have to tell you, I was just gonna show you. And they went, I, mean, I never... That's what allowed me to go, can I give you a hug? Because I instantly cared about her. Show them what the character looks like. Don't go to auditions anymore. Go to meetings. And tell your friends, I've got a meeting at 10.30. Gordon Hunt had a great thing, he was like, do something after that meeting. Don't let that be the highlight of your day. Because the second you get in your car, oh, I should have done Go get ice cream, go to the beach. <laughs> Jim, why are you in the sand? I was told to just do something. <laughs> I don't know what you guys do here in Arizona. Uh, all the way in the back, you, you just looked at me in the fold of your hands. Yes, we're doing, no, it's a silent auction. Four, come around, four to five, four to five, and a 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 60. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, I, I think I got, who asked that question about going through, did I ever answer your question? About what was your mindset about the Joker? I'll just listen. So, I had met Kevin. Um, before when we did Arkham City. And I didn't know I was gonna meet Kevin that day, nor did I know I was gonna meet Mark that day. Um, and well, funny story about Mark. Um, Mark and I sat, while Kevin was doing his lines, we're on the lot of Warner Brothers. And of course, like, it's full camera crew, hair and makeup, because Kevin and Mark are back. And Mark, if I'm ever on a, like, who wants to be millionaire or something like that, he's my lifeline. Because he knows more about, I don't know how that stuff is floating around in his head. He, we had a conversation about the Stones and the Beatles, and then the Kinks. Like, his, his breadth of knowledge about the music is, well, what you really need to understand is, of course, in 1964, what's happening? I'm like, I am geeking out over the Stones and the Beatles with Mark Hamill. Freaking out. Kevin's in the room. He's like, Troy, they're ready for you. I'm like, yep. So I go in, and I'm here. Kevin's about where you are. And he's just tall, just, Kevin, it's, it's my Batman. And he's going through a script, he's got his glasses on, and I go, hey man, I hate to do this. And I said, uh, there's an episode of Batman the Animated Series. <laughs> And he just holds his glasses and puts his bum. And I'm like, well, I'm in it now. Either I'm gonna get fired or whatever. I was like, it's, it's, um, Bruce Wayne wakes up and his parents are still alive and, and he, he, he looks at me and goes, perchance to dream. It's my favorite too. And I went, <laughs> that's when I met Kevin. When I met, or when I met the Joker. When I auditioned for the Joker, to get back to your question, I walked in and uh, it was an audition. 
And I had, that's how we got off on that tangent. Whew. Thank you, back on the on-ramp. Um, they didn't say, you're auditioning for the Joker. They said, you're auditioning for a character named Jack. No sides were given out ahead of time. So you walked in and I looked at it and went, oh. Because I recognized this is from uh, Batman the Animated Series. This is from Batman Begins, I think. And this is the Killing Joke monologue. This is the Tunnel of Love monologue and the Killing Joke. And I went, I'm about to go in there and audition for the Joker. And I mean, all of this stuff starts just, again, there's the door, I can leave right now. <laughs> so I walk in and they're filming it too. And uh, they said, so we just wanna, you know, the character is a little bit, it's like, yeah, but I, this is a Joker. They're like, well, how, do you, how do you know that? It's like, cause I'm not an idiot because I know the character and this is clearly stuff from the Joker. They're like, okay, well, we have confirmed that it's the Joker. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. They're like, what do you want to start with? And I was like, killing joke. And it's like page nine of the audition sites. And they're like, are you sure you want to start from the top? I was like, no, because if I suck, at least I want to hear this come out of my face. <laughs> and so I did it. Can we hear it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you will go on YouTube, <laughs> I'm almost out of time. Memories can be vile. There you go. Um, I so I did it, and I'm doing it like to camera because that the camera was like about the same distance here, and that was like in June, I think. And July, I go down and I have some beers with a buddy of mine at Comic Con, and he goes, "Hey, just want to give you a heads up. They're gonna they're gonna offer you the role." And I was like, which one? There are so many. <laughs> I was like, Batman? He goes, no, you idiot. Joker. And I went, oh, oh no, no. No, that's, yeah, that's, that's great. I'm probably, yeah, I'll have a conversation with them about that, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that. Turn it down. And they came back and they're like, this is what we're going to give you. This is what we want you to do. We want you to do a joke. Twice. Turned it down. Ames Kirshen, who at the time was head of Warner Brothers Games, calls me into his office and says, I want to meet with you. So I go to his office, brings me over to his desk. We just talked about this too at Comic Con this year. And he presses play on his computer and up comes my audition. And he plays it for me and I'm like watching it and of course like freaking out like you're like, oh God, I would've done this so much better. And then he gets done and he goes, that's really good. I'm like, hey man, I really appreciate it. He goes, no, you didn't get it. That's really good. We think that's good, and we're really smart. <laughs> you need to get over yourself and take the gig. And he was right. Fear. Because I was doing good. Last of Us had just come out. Bioshock had just come out. I'm all right. What if you mess it up? What if you do something and you fail miserably? You're a fraud. You're a phony. You've skated by this far and you do this and everyone's gonna know the truth. Fear. I turned it down for fear. <laughs> what have you said no to in your life out of fear that my, what if I fall my dear what if you fly what have we said no to out of fear now sometimes that can be a smart thing where you're like no no when someone crosses your boundaries no that's cool. But when it's like, I, I want to do this. I can't, I, maybe I could do Oh my God, what if I could do this? What if I get to do this? No, that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and um, I got this Soldier A thing that I'm working on right now. And it's really kind of a, a good, a re really meaty role. Like it, the, the way that I yell grenade, um, <laughs> I really feel capsulates. <laughs> All because of fear. 
What was my mindset? Run. Run. Now, and it continued all the way up to New York Comic Con, my man. Until I was sitting there, and Eric, our director, was like, he's this great Scott. And he goes, so, we need to give the people the voice. And I went, yeah, man, I uh, you know, just want to make sure that the, um, the character is heard. You know, when they see this face, I don't want them to see my face. I want them to see the character's face. He's like, listen, what are you afraid of? And I went, I'm afraid of, um, I'm afraid of ruining our game. He goes, oh! We made a great game, you can't cock it up. <laughs> Get up there and do the voice. <laughs> and he set me up for success. He was like, what do you want to do? I was like, let's go back where we started from, Killing Joke Monologue. He yeah. goes, all right. And he set me up beautifully. And my man, I tell you, there is an eternity in my memory that exists between that first line and the second. There's a, there's a theory that creationists have called the gap theory. Genesis 1-1 one, one to Genesis 1-2. Genesis 1-1 one, one is in the beginning that God created heavens and the earth. Genesis 1-2 is in the earth was void and without form. And there's people that believe that an immeasurable amount of time passed between those two. And that's where we get dragons and all of that stuff. That amount of time passed between memories can be vile and the next line. Because I heard nothing but the ringing in my ears. And I'm like, this is it. I could see the headlines. Some actor tries to do Joker, gets burned by people in Comic Con, <laughs> and just like dragged out into the streets. And it wasn't until I did the laugh at the end, and I look, I don't, if you watch the video, I don't look up. And I looked up, and one person goes, wow. And I just blurch. <laughs> We all have fear inside of us. Fear is not our enemy. It's just, it shouldn't be our guiding light. It's okay to have fear. It, it, it's what proves bravery. It's what helps us to find courage. Pain is not our enemy. Pain is our friend. Pain tells us what's wrong. Don't numb it, listen to it. Don't narcotize in whatever way that you do, be it drugs, drinking, friends, Twitter. Listen to your pain. I did this thing in Austin last weekend. It just, what, and I, I started doing it this week myself. What would happen if we just spent every day 60 seconds of silence? Sit in 60 seconds of silence. First of all, you will be amazed at how much your brain is going, holy crap, give us something to do. It will go from like crazy thought to crazy thought because it doesn't know how to just rest and be still. 60 seconds of silence and just focus on nothing else. Don't think about anything. Don't, it's meditation. It's just like, don't think about emptiness because that's whatever, that's stupid. Just sit and be still. And whatever happens, whatever comes into your mind, let it just pass through like you're watching a train car. Don't hold on to it, don't focus on it. Just acknowledge it and let it move past for 60 seconds and see what happens. It's amazing what will happen to your heart and your mind. Never thought this was going to be the panel, did you? Let's go do funny voices all day. Nope, going to drop wisdom and philosophy. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! You guys are very cool to, to allow me to share my heart. That's all that I care about doing because I've grown weary of... Thank you, thumbs up, man. <laughs> awesome. Um, he approves. <laughs> it gets lonely. I got a three month old son, man. And yeah, he's cool. He's awesome. But it gets, I love, flying is my favorite thing. I love to fly. I love to travel to new places. I love to meet new people. But it's getting harder and harder to get on that bird, I'll tell you. Because there's a little dude that everything he does, every little thing he does is magic. <laughs> And this is an episode of Retro Replay that's exactly where I should be singing. <laughs> is anybody watching that show? Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Have you watched this week's episode? Have you watched this episode where we're talking about these guys? Poor Ronnie. Poor fat Ronnie. God bless him. Yeah. yeah poor fat Ronnie. Got the cholesterol. It's real bad. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're like, what? 
First of all, you're probably not surprised anymore. You're just like, whatever. Just to let it wash over you. <laughs> Nolan North and I, he's an up-and-coming actor. Just... <laughs> Bless him. Um, I think he just got a SAG card. Uh, he and I just started doing this thing because we love hanging out. The hang, the hang is everything to us. And now we've just thrown in retro games. So we like went through, and this week we played Metroid. <laughs> it's amazing because he sucks. He's terrible. Uh, in some of these games, I'm only slightly better. I'm learning, or relearning. Games today are difficult. I saw people walking around with Cuphead shirts on. I don't know what's wrong with you people. Is that you? Come on, man. It's just... You know, Here's what, I told you this, like, take the controller and just smash yourself in the balls with it, and that's the game. Um, yay, I leveled up, and I did it, I platinum hit. Uh, um, old school games, there was no tutorial, and you couldn't go online and, like, learn about it. It was like, here, don't die, that's the game. What do I need to do? Mm, figure it out. Um, and God forbid if you had a brother and sister that if you're like, I told you I wanted you to do this, I you, just give me a second, I want you to do this right now, but it's like, just give me a second, reset button, I'll murder my sibling. <laughs> if you didn't have the game genie, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna murder my 10 year old sister. <laughs> I'm gonna murder my 10 year old sister. Um, and they'll bring it to like, why'd you murder her? It's like, reset button. Quit, just yeah, go. Um, so we're doing this show on YouTube <laughs> called Retro Replay. And every Thursday, Nolan and I sit down and we play some game of, of old. And we're, we're working our way as much as we can through uh, NES. And we just kind of broke the Sega seal when we were in the UK. And we did Aladdin, which was awesome! It was so much fun. Uh, hopefully we'll have that footage up soon. Uh, Aladdin was a lot of fun. Uh, Nolan was actually pretty good at it. Um, but it's, it becomes a backdrop for the conversation. Um, and it's more about, I've learned so much about Nolan, and I, I know Nolan very well, he's, he's one of my dearest friends. Um, but I, I've learned so much about him through these conversations. It's completely unscripted, there's nothing that, that, that is ever we go in, and even Drew, our producer, is like, here's some tangents that you guys go off. I'm like, never gonna listen to those. Um, put in the Game Boy and let's play. Not Game Boy, I don't think we can do those. Um, it's, a, it's a dad joke, right? Uh, who's got a question? Pink shirt, you shot that thing up way too fast. Go for it. Yes. Brother, the very end. Ken Levine is a bastard. He intentionally withheld that. So, whenever uh, Elizabeth, uh, whenever Courtney and I were, were recording together, and we ever got uh, maybe a little flirtatious, he goes, okay, no, 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 no. Can't just, just kind of back up that. I was like, I feel like this is an endearing moment. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> You're like, well, we almost made Bioshock Infinite Old Boy Edition. Um, how did Brolin come back from that one? How do you read that script and go, yeah, I can do that. Um, did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it was, it, was, it was very, 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 very long. There was also so much stuff that uh, Ken wanted to put in there that just, if he, if he put in every idea that he had for the game, that game would have never shipped. Um, he's a genius. Yeah, I, I count him as, as a dear, dear, dear friend. Um, and we've gone through, like, wherever there is contention, there is care. And there was a lot of contention. Like, like he and I have had some, like, serious conversations, but through it we've grown, and uh, I love that man dearly. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a good dude, and he's working on some really cool shit right now. Like, the, the games he has coming up is, is awesome. Um, yes, sir? When you go in for an audition, um, do you pretty much get the voice down right away, or are there a lot of rough drafts? It's the last thing I work on. I, I kid you not, it's the last thing I work on. I don't, I don't, I don't, Mickey works at this. Um, <laughs> He said, the dialogue is the last thing that I worry about because if it's written well and I understand the character, it should just flow out of me. If it doesn't, we have a problem. So, and that means the problem could be with me and the understanding of the character, the problem could be with the dialogue. And he's gonna have a conversation with the writer about it. That's Mickey Rourke. I never worry about the voice. Some people do, and they build a character around that. Me, it's always 
there, what, what do I know, what do I inherently know about this character that nobody else does? About Joel, what is it about him? There was something that was in the character, and Neil hates now this line because I've said it so many times. Um, there was a line in the, in the um, character description for the sides that went out that said, uh, he's a man with few moral lines left to cross. To me, that unlocked everything I needed to know about that character. Because if that's a truth about you, if that's who you are, A, you've crossed moral lines before and you've done it with such frequency that you're running out. What have you done? One of the best lines in the entire thing that tells you everything you need to know about Joel in the game is, how did you know that was an ambush? Because I've been on both sides. What? Yeah, the guys that we just killed, I've been one of those guys too. Which means that on any given day, remember, he was just hired to take some girl to some point. It's not that he looked at her. He didn't want her. He's like, I, I have to do this. He could have easily been one of the people that was trying to kill Ellie. Now what do you think about Joel? <laughs> so I don't care. <laughs> So I don't care about the voice, man, um, because it could be a distract. What if I get so buried in the voice that they're like, um, sorry, wait, you doing a, you doing a Texas thing? I don't think there was anything about Texas, by the way, with Joel in the, in the audition. I don't remember that being anywhere there. I just saw him and like, that's, that's what he sounded like. It just sounded like that. So what if I, there was nothing about Sam that had like that New England thing. I did it to annoy Nolan. <laughs> they changed the script. Nathan, I did that because that's what a big brother does. His little brother, he calls him by his full name. Oh, everybody calls you Nate, huh? That's cute, Nathan, Nathan. And, and every time I would see Nolan, and nobody told him that way, I didn't tell him that. It's so every scene was like, hey, Nathan, come on. He's like, oh, man, it's Nate. Have you played the games? It's Nate Drake, or Drake. I'll go with Drake. I'm like, I know. Oh, you son of a, and like he knew what I was doing. And they started changing in the script. Whenever it would be Nate for, written for Sam, they'd be like, scratch, 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 Nathan. He's like. <laughs> so it's, that has nothing to do with the voice. That happened to be a choice for the voice, but it was based on who the character is, which is ribbing his little brother and still trying to kind of keep him under the thumb. Because remember this, Sam is older than Nathan. Which is, I had to go, how do I play older than Nolan? How do you play older than someone who's five years older than me? He's not much older, but he's still older than me. Sam was in, okay, Sam was in prison, and Nathan goes off and he has all of these adventures. So when he sits down, he's like, tell me, what did I miss? The older has become the younger, the younger has become the older. He became, Nate's become the big brother, and you see that all the way throughout. Nate, Nathan carries Sam throughout that entire game. It's brilliant. That has nothing to do with the voice, man. So if I try to lock that in, well, I, had no, I didn't work on the Joker when I walked in. I walk in, what am I reading for? This, oh crap. What am I gonna do, go in the parking lot and try to figure it out? I went into the booth and went, Bleh. and out came that. Now, some people could completely disagree with me. That's my thing. This is the beauty of being an actor. You can have your own process. The only thing I will tell you, if your process begins to impede on your other actors or it exists, simply try to impress, kill it. It's not your process. It's pretension and it's you pretending. Don't pretend, act. Be. That's it. I was on a game. How am I doing? I'm, over, I'm out of time, aren't I? Shoot. You're right at it. And the main thing is, <laughs> I'll tell you this real quick story. I'm on the set of a game, there's an actor, I like to be the first one on set, there was an actor that uh, beat me there. And I, I walk in, and this sound stage is bigger than this room. This sound stage is, is massive. They could fit, an, 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 a, they could shoot an elephant and still have room for James Cameron's ego <laughs> in this thing. <laughs> kidding. They actually had to shoot the elephant on the other stage. Um, dad joke number three. Um, so I, I walk in and I find in the middle of the sound stage is this actor and he's stretched out over the table. It's going off. And like, 
the AD, yes. The AD is like moving around and I'm going, sorry, excuse me. And everyone's like looking awkward. I'm like, oh my, did your dog die? Did your, did your wife leave you? What horrible thing has befallen this poor pathetic, oh my God, he's preparing. So I watch and he said, Here's the thing. He's third shot up. One, two, three. There's two other scenes that we have to shoot before we get to his, which in no way requires him to cry. At all. Ever. What was he preparing for? Express, don't impress. Three words. You are enough. Thank you guys for spending your afternoon.